So most of my friends have quit Magic, or if they're still playing Magic, it is just EDH only. And maybe they get one day a month to play Magic. Um, a lot of uh, times, even when we do have that one day a month to hang out, at my home, we play board games instead. We'll pick up a new board game. I have a collection of probably 500, 600 board games, most of them sealed. And it's a lot fun. It's a lot more fun. And you're learning new techniques, new combos, new interesting interactions, right? And it's uh, more fun than magic. And I hate to say that because we obviously are MTG Lion and we still have the website. Um, I am looking to sell a large position off. And I've had some offers, all low balls, right? So I don't need the money. And honestly, it doesn't make, it, it's more work. I can make more money as a patent attorney or immigration attorney than mailing the cards out. So basically that's my mindset, right? I can just work an extra 10 hours, make an extra $5,000. That's one, that's like one very, very minor immigration case. So um, that's where I am right now. I'm at the point where I think um, I, my collection is big enough. It's massive. I've accumulated a very large position. The other part that is interesting is after Lord of the Rings is done, we still have to finish off that order, but it's already been prepaid. Everything just gotta get shipment delivered correctly to my friend and it's all done. Uh, my contract is finished for the rest of the year so I don't need to buy anything else. So I, as soon as, you know, again, my contract is finished on my side. I just want to have to make sure my friend gets everything that he wants to get. Otherwise we'll have to, you know, rebate, refund, you know, this is missing, that's missing. Sometimes it happens for big packages. I've had that happen a few times in the past. Um, but uh, for the most part, it should be okay. But it's a very big package. It's probably the biggest one time buy we've ever made in Magic the Gathering. Now we have attempted larger buys in Pokemon, which on paper look larger than 72,000, but when they actually came, they uh, limited the amount. So it was, it was and then they re refunded us the money. Of course they kept the money until the refund. That's uh, how they do the interest rates, right? So yeah, I, I just have a very gloom and doom feeling about the game right now. I don't know what it is, except like I look around and nobody my age is playing the game. No one my age collects the game and no one of my friends play the game. So it is very lonely. Now I do have a YouTube and of course you, we can open packs and I, I'm becoming less it's less fun to open packs now. It, it's really because I've already opened and you might go, oh, just open a new, yeah, I have opened a new stuff. It's less fun. You know, in the beginning, it was a little bit of fun because there was cards I didn't know as foils and, you know, but then once you learn that none of it is worth money, like it's not even like shocking. There are times I hit like a really cool planeswalker and I'm like, oh, this is probably worth a dollar. And then it turns out it's 50 cents. Uh, I think they have a real, real core problem right now. And I think the core problem I can summarize in like one sentence, there's, no one new blood in the game, meaning there's no one who is new. When you look at the pro tour, it's all these same people, Autumn, you know, um, that one dude, Craig, whatever. It's all the same people you've seen a million times again, and they're just getting older, right? They're just, when you look at a picture of the pro tour and you look at the age of the people and then you look at who they are, hey, these are the same people who've been here five years ago. So that, that's my, oh, Jim Davis. It was uh, Jim Davis, he was undefeated and I guess he did really poorly in draft and then he didn't make the top eight. But you look at the top eight, there's no, I mean, there's no new people. These people are playing the game for decades. Uh, if they're new, or like autumn, maybe five years. And I, I really don't think the game has that much longer left to go. Um, now, will it be collectible? Will it be valuable? Yes, 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 because people will still want it. And I'm, a participant in dead card games like Inuyasha and Fire Emblem Cypher. I can just tell you, even though the games are dead, Inuyasha has been dead for like 10 years almost, maybe more, no, 20 years, no, sorry, almost 20, 15, at least 15, but at least two, maybe 20 plus years. And there's still a very rabid fan base. I can tell you when I bring these cards to an anime convention, it's all gone. It's all gone. We don't need to worry about bringing, because I only bring, I think I showed this in another video, we're only bringing the popular characters. In Magic, it'll be the same thing. 
Uh, now again, the you know equipment won't be very good because no one wants the equipment anymore. Less people will collect, less people will play it, and more people will collect it, which is the same. It's fine. There's a Pokemon right now. That's why Pokemon cards are still stabilizing and doing extremely well. People collect it. People don't really play it unless they're little children. So you don't really, the grown-ups collect it, the children play it. And that's okay. Uh, could that be something that Magic has in the future? I hope so. I hope that it becomes a playable game for younger kids and that they, they do enjoy it like they enjoy Pokemon. But I, I have my doubts. So, uh, as an old school Magic player, there's not many of us left. Um, it, it's basically extinction. Like when I moved to, um, okay, I'll tell you about my, my story. Um, so I played at Battlegrounds in New York uh, with a play group from my NYU days. None of them still play Magic. The only time they would play Magic is if they are on a layover and they stay the night in Houston and we just open pack. We don't play, we just open packs. Uh, so in law school and uh, in NYU in college, my freshman year, all my dorm mates and my roommates, they all played Magic. And there was a grocery store. I remember it's like a shady grocery store and they had like the most valuable Magic packs you can imagine for like pennies. Uh, we went to Dissension pre-release and return our original Ravnica. Original Ravnica pre-release. Uh, Dissension was spring. I think original Ravnica was the first semester. So as freshmen, and it was fun. None of those guys play Magic no more. Minus, we're still good friends. We're still, I'm still good friends from two of my, well, my roommate I'm still good friends with and my one of my sweet mates I'm still really good friends with. And then um, down the hall, three of those guys I'm really good friends with and then we all play Magic. And, uh, and, then, and, and then on the two floors, of, I think we're at eighth floor. I wouldn't say we were eighth or ninth floor, but like a, a few floors above us, there were people who played Magic too. And then actually, you know, uh, we, we had an amazing, it was University Hall. We had an amazing uh, basement and the basement had a pool table, but you flip it and you just play Magic tournaments there. I had such a blast uh, with those guys and none of them play Magic anymore, right? Um, and it's, it's a little sad to see that. Uh, and then when I went to law school, I went to this game store called Groovy Geckos. Uh, I think it was Dark Ascension in a Strad. Uh, we definitely did that. And the, the group was an amazing play group. And I don't, and I don't think anyone there plays Magic anymore either. I've kept in contact with some of the people uh, and definitely my friends from law school. I had two friends from, three friends from law school would play Magic and they no longer play. I actually have uh, one of their collections and it, it was a pretty massive collection. And then I came to Houston and these uh, pre-releases had 100, 200 people. It was so amazing for me because like, you know, I'm used to like a very small. So I went from Battlegrounds, which is 100, 200 people, right? And New York City. And then I went to Williamsburg, which is maybe like 20 people on pre-release at, at most. And then I went to, you know, Houston. And, I, and even in my little town of Humble, which is 16,000 people, they could fill up the whole room. They fill up every table, every state. There's people on the couch there. I mean, half the people aren't even playing in their pre-release. They're just hey, there to hang out. What a, a cool event when I first came here. Now that same store is not even WPN. It doesn't even have one person at pre-release. So like, you know, people in comments, they tell me, oh, my store's killing it and blah, blah, blah. Like be grateful because those are experiences and memories that I've had and I'm grateful I had them, but I think they're becoming less, I personally think that they're becoming less and less common. Like again, the store that I came to in Houston in 2012, you would talk about, man, it was full to the brim. Even Saturday, there would be, you know, a lot of people playing pre-release on Saturday, uh, but that midnight pre-release, massive turnout. Nobody playing no more. Nobody playing no more. Hmm. And I thought MTG Arena would be the solution to this, but I, I don't like it no more. After the whole autumn thing, like I, I was like, uh, I'm not gonna do this no more. So that's where I am. It's very sad, but um, I, I'm still having fun with Pokemon, obviously. I'm still having fun with other card games like One Piece and so on, just opening them. I don't really have the time to play anymore. So right now I'm just looking for the collectability aspect, the chase element, you know, that dopamine hit. And uh, yeah, Magic is just, not, I mean, I've opened a shit ton of Magic product recently and it's not, 
like nothing is worth any money. There's one card in Dominaria United that might be worth chasing, um, Seedred. And uh, I think it's like a $90 card in a card team. I was so surprised. I was like, is this in the set or is this like a special? No, it's in the set. Now there are specialty versions of it, but nonetheless, it's a very interesting card. I, I probably will go on, on a hunt, open a few thousand packs, see if I can get a play set of uh, each version. Probably more than a thousand packs. Ooh. Anyway, bye guys.